Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to probably the most insane checkmate in the chess history. Some of my subscribers in the last videos asked me to, to bring more tactical games, more crazy tactics and here we go. This is what I found, very unique game. Uh, it was played in Philadelphia in 1945 and let me introduce you the players. Barney Frank Winkelmann, um, who's gonna play as Black, probably you've never heard about Barney or Maybe you heard about Barney because of this game, but if you haven't seen that game, then probably you haven't heard about him. Uh, Barney was the amateur player. He was the, the editor in the Chess Review uh, magazine. Um, so this what we know about him. Um, not much information about him, I found. Uh, and then his opponent, the most famous chess player in the history, Nomen Neskio. He played a lot of games in the last couple of hundred years, mostly losing games. However, here we go. Uh, I estimate the strength of these opponents as, you know, slightly above 2000 as the opening was uh, played pretty well and the insane position at the end of the game is really requires a lot of calculation and imagination. So uh, without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Uh, we have e4 by Nomenescio e5 and knight c3. So a Vienna game so far, neither f6 and now f4 Vienna Gambit. Uh, we have d5 main line, um, one of the most interesting one. f takes on e5, knight takes on e4 and nowadays in the 21st century knight f3 is the most solid, the most popular game uh, way of playing that. However, we have queen f3, which is still okay because for example Daniel Dubov play queen f3, Hikaru Nakamura plays um, queen f3. Um, the idea is of course winning the pawn on, on e4. This pawn um, gonna be lost. However, uh, in this position, black play knight c6. So this is what I said, the, the knowledge about that opening is uh, pretty much important. And you would say, okay, but white's gonna win the pawn. It's not really the case in this uh, situation because after knight e4, black can play actually knight d4. Here is the deal, and now this pawn on, on c2 is under attack, and if white tries to defend queen c3, then this pawn not gonna be taken. So um, that is the idea, and if the queen tries to actually uh, win the pawn, it doesn't work, uh, because after taking there is always beautiful bishop f5. So this is very nice opening trap if you um, didn't know that, and you sometimes play the, the Vienna game of Vienna Gambit, then here you go, uh, of course the knight is defended by the queen, the bishop is defended, and also the bishop and the knight um, attack c2, so uh, black gonna win the rook um, and probably the game. So this is why we have bishop b5 pinning this annoying knight, so the knight cannot jump to d4 anymore. Uh, and here, what black usually played nowadays in the 21st century, modern theory says um, knight c3, and after d takes on c3, queen h4 exchange the queens uh, this way. And the game can be, of course, continue. Hikaru Nakamura, for example, played um, bishop f4, uh, solidifying the position, defending this pawn. Also, another possibility is uh, giving up the pairs of uh, bishop, maybe not for everyone. Uh, a lot of players play that as well because uh, it's gonna, of course, mess up the, uh, the black pawn structure. So that's another option. Uh, however, in our game, we have bishop c5 already threatening the, the jump to f2 and winning the rook. So that's why we have knight takes on e4, d takes on e4, queen e4. So white actually uh, won that pawn. Uh, we have castle. So black sacrificed the pawn, but also get a lot of uh, good development. This bishop can be developed um, already very easily. The pieces are developed at the same time the king uh, stays in the center. So we have knight e2 also developing and preparing to the, to the castle, which is not possible because of this annoying bishop. We have rook e8 now threatening to take on e5. This is why we have bishop takes on c6, b takes on c6, and now we have the the critical moment of the game. Think for a while what would you play as white in this position is a critical moment of the game. What are your options? So one of your options is uh, playing something like d4 
uh, and the bishop is of course kicked bishop f8 or b6 doesn't really matter white can uh, very simply uh, castle so bishop a6 also development but simply rook f2 and the game can continue this pawn is under attack queen d7 let's say bishop e3 the rook's gonna come to the f5 and pull a lot of pressure on them on the f7 so this is the solid way of playing chess, very positional, very strong continuation. However, in our game, we have much more sharper move. Queen c6 attacking the rook, attacking the bishop. And what do you think black can play in that position? Can black exploit the king in the center? That's the, you know, very important question. Pause the video and find the strongest continuation for black. And I guarantee if you find all the continuation, you will be very, very happy while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? The strongest move in the position, which Winkelmann actually played, was rook e5. Boom, sacrificing the rook. We have queen a8 uh, and now rook e2. Another sacrifice, another rook sacrifice. So we already have two rooks sacrifice. Of course, if the rook is taken, um, then the king is on the light squares and black can exploit that. Bishop a6 with the check, uh, attacking the queen, winning the queen. Uh, so this, of course, is winning with extra bishop is, of course, winning. Um, just remember, if you play something like bishop g4, that the queen can actually return um, and uh, white gonna equalize the material. It's still better for black because of the initiative and the rooks are not um, not active yet. However, you know, it's just unnecessary. But in our game, we have king d1. So Winkelmann's uh, opponent actually saw that. And this is why we have king d1 and now the most spectacular part. If you found it already, congratulations. If not, you can pause the video one more time and try to find the, the best continuation. And if you find the good winning continuation, try to find even more spectacular one this one is insane if you find it you're gonna be happy if you find rook d2 it's just you know a uh, regular continuation of course winning because if king moves to e1 then of course we're gonna have a checkmate and uh, you cannot defend from that and if bishop d2 that is a bit more boring one let's say boring one but it's still winning of course bishop g4 and uh, and yeah what we can do that is the checkmate on d2 so uh black gonna win the game with extra bishop that's the one way of uh, continuing but if you want to play the most beautiful move in the position is actually bishop g4 sacrificing the queen sacrificing the queen this is just insane the queen of course can return to to f3 which is losing but in our game we have queen d8 boom check and now look at this rook e8 checkmate this is just insane uh i think it's the most insane uh checkmate in the chess history something uh, i see for the first time if you see sometimes you know the movies where we have um, the move you know check and the opponent watch in the eyes and say checkmate a lot of people complain it's impossible this is example of this situation where we have check followed by the checkmate uh, by the opposite color this is just insane if you agree with me leave the comment this is insane and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you want to see more insane games on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and See you in the next one.